Okay, good evening, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Sam McGowan. Uh, I'm part of the VRealize Automation Technical Marketing Team for the Cloud Management Business Unit of VMware. Uh, but today I'm talking about uh, automating secrets with HashiCorp Vault and VRealize Automation. So kind of part, partly my day job and, and partly doing some uh, cool stuff with Vault. Uh, so, uh, very brief introduction for anyone who's not used VRealize Automation before. Um, it's made up of various uh, parts, so various uh, applications within the uh, platform. Uh, Cloud Assembly, which is our sort of uh, infrastructure as code, um, infrastructure, um, sort of endpoints and things like that. Uh, Service Broker, which is our um, cloud catalog. Um, code stream, which is our sort of pipelining tool, and VRealize Orchestrator, which is our um, orchestration and automation workflow software. Uh, so today, the demo I'm going to do is using uh, Cloud Assembly, Service Broker, and VRealize Orchestrator, as well as communicating with um, with HashiCorp Vault. So. Um, that is the only slide that is any kind of marketing at all. Um, you'll be pleased to know. Uh, day job over, tick. Um, so what is HashiCorp Vault? So Vault is a secrets management tool. Um, it's a place where you can store your secrets. Um, it's got actually loads of different functionality. So you've got your secure secret storage. Um, you can also um, generate dynamic secrets. So um, a part of what we're doing today will be generating dynamic secrets to keep things secure. Um, you can uh, you can generate secret secrets for external systems such as like AWS and SQL database and things like that, um, and you can automatically revoke them and there's lease times and times to live and things like that on the token. So it's very useful for uh, providing access for a short period of time programmatically and then and then discarding that access afterwards. Um, we can also encrypt and decrypt data without actually storing it. So you effectively pass data through Vault and it spits it back out uh, encrypted. Um, so that's quite useful if you actually, you don't want to implement your own encryption within a database or something like that. You can use Vault as a service to encrypt it and then store those values in your database. Um, everything in Vault has a lease associated with it. So you've got leases and renewal um, and uh, if a lease expires, then whatever it is that's protected will, will automatically revoke. Um, but you can also extend your um, leases depending on policy uh, via the API. So you get, you've got um, ways of maintaining credential access and things like that. And also Vault has support for revoking secrets. Um, it, can, it can revoke sort of on a hierarchical basis. So you can revoke an entire namespace of secrets, like a tree of secrets. Um, or particular secrets. Um, you can also um, re uh, revoke individual secrets and roll new keys at the same time. So it allows you to rotate passwords and things like that, um, or just revoke all access for a particular user um, in case you know someone's gone rogue or they've left the company or something like that. So um, that sort of barely scratches the surface of what Vault can do, um, but hopefully you get an idea that it's a, it's a secure platform. It's um, great for managing your secrets, uh, encryption, and it's got a very powerful suite of uh, functionality in it. Um, so I'm not gonna talk about the architecture of Vault or anything like that. Uh, I'm gonna get straight into um, talking through what the demo is gonna be and then actually showing you the code and stuff because um, these are short sessions and uh, I think they're covered better elsewhere by other people. So the next slide, if I can work PowerPoint, is blank. Um, so this is what we're gonna to do today. Um, and I'm gonna talk you through step by step because there are some concepts in here you have to kind of grasp to understand what's going on. And hopefully I can do them justice because it can get a little bit complicated. Um, so first of all, we're gonna use Service Broker and we're gonna create a custom form. Uh, and that custom form uh, is going to um, request a new deployment. And the idea here is that we don't want to give our end users any credentials, but they need to be able to request a new server and that new server needs credentials to access some external third party. Uh, it might be an API or something like that, but it needs some credentials. And we don't want the people requesting the form to, to know it. And we also don't want the um, to hard bake it, hard code it into the platform or the blueprint. Um, because those those credentials could then be compromised that way. So the idea is to get um, the credentials to the deployment uh, in the most secure way possible. 
So first of all, we have our, our service broker form, and this is wrapped around a, a catalog item, and it allows us to run Vrealize orchestrator actions against values within that form. And so this orchestrator action is gonna uh, actually go out and authenticate using LDAP in this case with the Vault server. So um, I've got a, a, a VRO Vault service account configured within that LDAP authentication. Mm -hmm. And there's a policy that's assigned to that authentication. Um, so the policy limits um, what we can do with those credentials. So there is only one thing that that credential is allowed to do, and that's wrap a uh, wrap an app role secret ID. And I'll get onto that in a minute, what that is in a minute. But what this does is allow us to have very tightly controlled access to the specific uh, action. So we have LDAP authentication, we've got a policy applied. And what happens is we generate a token and that token is then returned to Vrealize Orchestrator. And then Orchestrator is going to use that token to access what's called the wrapping service. And this is an API call to Vault uh, to, and it's actually going to wrap the app role. And uh, so there's, as I said, there's a couple of concepts we need to know. First one is the wrapping service. The wrapping service allows us to create a new token, a wrapping token, and that wrapping token has access to one specific thing, and that is called a cubbyhole. And that, that is secure storage for that one particular token. So if we imagine that wrapping token as a user, that user has access to the cubbyhole but it only has access to that cupboard hole and it's only accessible for the time of the that, that tokens alive. Uh, and what we're actually doing is when we're wrapping the token, we're specifying a very short time for that token to live. And we're specifying that that token can only be used once. And we're actually even locking it down to what can you, what, what IP address can use that token. So we have very tight control over this wrapping token. So first of all, we've authenticated with LDAP to get permission to wrap something. We're then using the wrapping service and we're wrapping an app role. Now an app role is designed to be for uh, code programmatic access to Vault. And, and if you think of the app role, it's made up of two components, uh, a C app, ID, app role ID and a secret ID. And the app role ID is like your username and the secret ID is like your password. Um, but the secret ID is only generated at the time we request it from the wrapping service. So if you follow me here, we've got a wrapping token, which has permission to access the app role secret ID. It's so that's that wrapping token only has access to that secret ID. Uh, and it's limited in terms of the amount of time that it can access it for. So in this case, uh, I think I've used 10 minutes. Uh, so it's allowed to access it for 10 minutes. And it's allowed to use it once, and it's only allowed to use it from the from the IP address that I've specified. So once we've got this uh, wrapping token and our secret ID, which is stored securely in our cubby hole, um, we can then return that wrapping token back to Vrealize Orchestrator, and Vrealize Orchestrator has returned that to the service broker form. Now all of this has happened at the user interface level. So when the user has opened up the form. Uh, all of that's happened in the background. It's gone off. It's done the wrapping and orchestrator has returned uh, a code, a token code back to service broker. Uh, and now the, the user can configure the request for the deployment and uh, configure like the name of it and things like that or whatever the form is. But once it's once the user's ready, they then request, they hit request and the request is made uh, to the cloud template and the wrapping token is passed to the cloud template as a custom property. So the cloud template is then sent on to um, cloud assembly and cloud assembly is going to start fulfilling that request, that cloud template request. Uh, and remember one of the properties of this, the, this request is a custom property, which is our wrapping token. Okay, you're with me so far. I told you it could get complicated. I'm trying to explain it quickly and carefully so we can see what's going on. So from this point, uh, the, we're going to trigger an ABX action. An ABX action is an action that is tied to an event within the life cycle of our cloud template. And it happens to be before we deploy this template, run this action. That action 
knows the role ID. So you remember I said we needed a role ID and a secret ID to access the secret. Well, we've got that role ID and we've got a token to allow us to unwrap the secret ID. So what happens is the action will then send the token to the cubbyhole and say, hey, cubbyhole, can I have my secret ID, please, unwrapped? The unwrapped secret ID will be passed back to the ABX action. It will then use the role ID and the secret ID and use them to authenticate against the app role authentication. So our app role, again, has a policy associated to it. And that policy uh, tells us exactly what we can access and can't access with, uh, within the vault secret. So in this case, it's, it, we're allowed to access the one particular secret that we're after. Okay, so we, we swap that app role uh, ID and secret ID. We swap them for a new, new token and that token is returned to the ABX action. And then the final step is that we use that token, which is our app role authenticated token to access a secret within the secrets engine. So this obviously seems like a very convoluted, um, very convoluted way of getting a secret from the platform. But what it does is it allows us to have no single component has all of the parts that it needs to access the secret. So via uh, orchestrator by itself, if it's compromised, it can't access the secret. The service broker form doesn't know anything until orchestrator tells it. Um, the ABX action has the, the role ID, but it needs the secret ID from the wrapped token from orchestrator. So this allows us any single part of this could be compromised without any of it being um, any, any of it being a problem to us or a security problem. Uh, and then the final step is obviously our unlocked password or whatever the secret is, is passed back to cloud assembly and the deployment can be, uh, can be uh, pushed out um, with this secure password in place. Everyone with me for now? Okay, it's demo time. So hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense when we actually see this uh, in action and working. Um, has, I'll, I'll just pause there for one second. Are there, has there any questions? Anyone got any uh, any questions on that so far, or or is it all glazing over until I show you an actual demo? Yeah, and this is just a reminder. <clears throat> Sorry, this is Josh, the co-host. Um, feel free to ask your questions in chat or the Q and A feature. Uh, we'll make sure Sam sees those uh, throughout. So um, feel free to do that. Well, thanks, Josh. Okay. So uh, let's get started. Remember I said we started in cloud assembly when the user requests the form. We're actually gonna start, first of all, have a quick look in orchestrator. Um, and the reason for that is um, cloud, you won't see anything in cloud assembly particularly exciting. We wanna see what's happening uh, in, behind the covers, so to speak. Hopefully orchestrator will actually open at this point. Here we go. Okay. so. I mentioned that we were using an orchestrator action. And here we're in uh, a folder of actions that are related to Vault, which is part of this demo. So what you can see here is I've got three actions. Uh, I've got get field demo test app role wrapped secret ID, which is a very long winded uh, name for an action, but it, it's basically the action that's called by via uh, by um, cloud uh, cloud assembly not cloud assembly service broker and uh, within this i've obviously got my ldap configuration hard coded um you there are various different ways within the platform that you could not have this hard coded um, and have it as, as variables and all that sort of thing um of configuration items um but for the purposes of this we'll assume that's that's the case so i've got two modules that are being called the first one is getting the authentication token, and that's using the API, uh, using the vault URL, username and password, and a type, which is our LDAP authentication. Next one is uh, actually getting the wrapped secret token. So that's making an API request to the wrapping service and using the token, the vault access token, which I have here. So it's, it's sending that vault access token. It's set, making a request to the URL uh, it's going to the app role, which is 
my field demo test app role there. And then it's telling it it's time to live. We, we only want it to live for 600 seconds. So that's the 10 minute uh, expiry there. Uh, and then the policy uh, around the app role is telling it to uh, only allow once and also only have uh, one IP, specific IP allowed to access it. Uh, if we have a quick look at the get authentication token, um, I'm just wrapping around a, a rest host object uh, and depending on the authentication type, I'm making a post to a specific URL and we're returning uh, the client token from the object. Uh, so it's just a, a REST API call to Vault. Uh, the second one is getting a wrapped secret. Uh, and this is making a post to uh, the secret ID. Uh, and we're telling it to wrap the secret. And again, we're returning the wrap info token. So let's jump into Service Broker. I'm going to open up a few tabs here so that we can see what's going on. Are we have time. Okay, so within the catalog items, I've got this Cloud Assembly Blueprint, uh, and there's a custom uh, custom form configured. So if I flip into the content for a second, we can see here that the testable AP, ABX has a custom form enabled. And if I have a look at the customized form, you can see here that I've got vault wrap token as an input. And the value of that is from an external source. And it's from that get field demo test app role wrapped secret ID action. So when we go back to the catalog item and I open the catalog item, we start a request. Uh, I can configure the deployment name and I can configure which project I'm using. Uh, and then I get this value here that's the vault wrap token. And it's my token that's been returned from my Virilize Orchestrator action. So I'm just gonna kick this one off. Uh, so let's call it go connect 2020. Actually, let's do one just in case I've done it before. And so we've here, we've started to deploy uh, the blueprint. So if I jump into Cloud Assembly, I mean, this is following, if I jump back into, let's do this. So if I jump back into this diagram here, we've been and made our orchestrator action. We've wrapped our token. Um, it's returned it. That was the value we saw in the service broker. I've now submitted it to the cloud template, which is uh, fulfilling it through Cloud Assembly. We're going to trigger that ABX action and we're going to gather the secret. So let's jump into Cloud Assembly. I'm just opening new tabs for everything to uh, save time switching backwards and forwards. So if we have a look at the blueprint, it's a very simple blueprint that I'm deploying. Test for ABX. And I've just got a very simple VM. I've got an, a, a connected to a network. And part of the inputs is this vault wrap token parameter. And you would never really do this in, in, uh, in a production environment because this is going to mean that the password is actually visible within the platform. Um, but I'm actually inputting this uh, vault wrap token into my uh, parameters here. Sorry, the parameters not, I'm gonna replace um, part of my cloud config. I'm gonna replace this admin password with the returned value from my secret ID. Uh, so that makes sense in a second when I get to that point. But just, just for now, uh, make a note that we've got a custom property called vault wrap token, which is the value of this vault wrap token input. So the ABX, the action-based extensibility. Um, so what ABX allows us to do is run an action, which is effectively uh, a, a function as a service execution um, against an event in the life cycle of the VM deployment. So uh, we, if, let's have a look. If I show the subscription here, we've got a, 
Vault AVX demo. And when the deployment is requested uh, and of this particular blueprint, I'm telling it to run an action called get user password secret from Vault, which is quite uh, literally named. Uh, and this is blocking the execution of of the uh, of anything else until the uh, the action has returned. So if we have a look at the action itself, um, it's written in in Python, and uh, I'm importing uh, the HVAC, which is the HashiCorp Vault uh, client library, um, and then I'm because I'm making API calls, um, disabling SSL warnings in the lab and things like that. Um, but we have this main handler function, which is going to uh, going to going to do our vault wrapping token actions. So this ABX action here, first of all, it's going to use the token, the wrapping service token, to get the secret ID. It's then going to authenticate with the app role. And then it's going to go and get the secrets, the secret from the secrets engine. So as we go through here, um, it already knows my vault role ID, um, and it's going to get the wrapping token here from the custom properties vault wrap token. We're then going to create a vault client with my vault URL, uh, and I'm not going to verify the SSL certificate. Uh, I'll not do mutual TLS. So I'm, I'm, I can't. Uh, for the purposes of demo, I'm not going to do mutual TLS in this environment. Uh, I'm then going to set the vault wrap token. So the client token is the vault wrap token. So this is the first stage. And then I'm going to run vault client sys unwrap. And because it knows this token only has access to its cubby hole, it's going to unwrap the secret ID from, from its cubby hole. So this is the, the, these three lines here are the first stage. We're going to unwrap this secret. So we're going to send the credential, the wrapping token. It's going to unwrap it and return to me the unwrapped secret ID. And this is the secret ID um, just being brought out of the response. So I now have the vault secret ID. So next, I re-authenticate the client. And this time, I do it with the auth app role. So I'm using the app vault role ID and the vault secret ID which is my response. Uh, and then assuming I'm authenticated, I'm going to go off finally um, with, so I'll have a new token uh, as part of the vault client from the authentication. I'm going to go off. I'm going to read my password from my vault. So I'm going to pause just there very quickly. Um, so this is, this is my vault interface. And this is my secrets engine. Within the secret engine, I'm going into field demo, and then I'm going into this specific URL, which is how I've placed the secrets from for, for this environment in there. And then I've got my passwords. And then within there, this is not a real password. I've got a randomly generated password here for Sam. So we can see here that I'm going, I'm, I'm returning the vault secret password is from the field demo key vault uh, on the path of that URL and then passwords and I'm looking for Sam uh, and then what I'm doing actually here is is replacing that admin password string with the secret password that I've generated so what we should see at the end of this uh, when this passes it back to the template is it's replaced my password in the cloud config with the password that we've requested this is not a valid use case, I'm going to say right now. Um, this is not a valid use case here for um, replacing the password on, on your um, VMs at the end. Um, I would use it for other things, especially because, as you'll see in a minute, this is for demo purposes only. We can see within Cloud Assembly the password in, in plain text. So let's go, let's close out of this and we'll go to the deployments and we'll see the result of our request. So it's deployed, that's always a good start. Uh, and then my virtual machine here uh, has deployed. And if we scroll down to the custom properties, first of all, we can note that we have our vault wrap token. That's perfectly fine for you guys to see this token now. It's been used 
it's been used once and so therefore it's no longer accessible for anyone else it's also only accessible remember from the ip address of my appliance and it's also um probably expired well it'll expire in a few minutes anyway even if it hadn't been used um, so that's fine perfectly fine um, and if we look at the cloud config which is what i modified with the password we can see here that instead of what was the string that was in my password list in, in my cloud config we've got the string that uh, of that password and this is why i say this is not a valid use case for any kind of like production management because it is hot it is showing this all in um in plain text okay so how are we doing have we got any questions uh yeah we have um one in the chat I, I i don't remember if you answered this yet from george um can we can we use the pass through um <coughs> sorry about that um i actually don't know how to pronounce this idap slash kerberos off okay. of vault for yeah, example yeah you can see it yeah, yeah i can see that um okay so the question is can we use the 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 credentials of the user that's running uh, the action in vro through to vault um i don't know is the honest answer to that um the ldap credentials will be stored somewhere as um as part of the endpoint but i don't know if you can then programmatically access them um what i would probably do um is in in uh, if I if I was doing this in production, I would probably have an app role configured for VRO as well, and use v because it's such a limited access. I would have the app role. Um, uh, yeah, I, I would have the app role rather than using LDAP or Kerberos authentication and trying to sort of pop that through to Vault. Um, I would probably just use like a service account app role. Um, it's a good question. Um, I don't know if you can access enough of the details of the old Apple Kerberos within VRO to actually authenticate against uh, ABX. Because when you authenticate with VRO, you're getting a, a, a token for your VRO access. Uh, you're not actually using your credentials um, it, it, it's, it's, it's coming from the context of either VRA or um, vSphere for your authentication. Uh, was it wrong? All right. Um, we do have another question from Emmanuel. Uh, is the HVAC module installed by default for ABX runtimes? So no, it's not installed <coughs> by default. Um, if you have a look over here, um, I've got uh, a dependency dependency defined here, and what will happen is when when um, the FAS provider here, you can see the FAS provider is selected to you on premises. So when Open FAS runs this uh, action on the uh, VRA appliance, uh, it's actually going to go out and download the HVAC um, dependency here. So I've I've specified a version and the uh, and, and the module name. Uh, it's exactly like the requirements file for Python in Python. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's exactly the same format. Okay, we are right. just about out of time. Uh, and I've got another uh, session to jump onto now. Yeah, so um, everyone, uh, thank you for attending so much. Uh, I did post a link to a survey uh, that will help you know provide feedback for future code cons. So if you could uh, click that link in the chat, uh, that'd be very helpful. But thank you so much, Sam. Thanks for presenting. Uh, and I hope everyone has a good day. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.